So Shoma went to open the door. When she opened it, she was shocked to see Adobe standing there with her luggage. Yoma, is there a problem? Why are you here so late? she asked. Your Majesty, do I need your permission to visit my son's house? she answered rudely. A long time ago, there was a wealthy woman called Adobe who lived in the village of Oako. She was loved by the villagers even though they had reasons to judge her. Adobe was a single mother, a proud mother to a wonderful son called Chiki. From the day she stepped into Wako pregnant at age 16, she worked hard, earning every salary until she became very wealthy from her textile business. From her wealth, she took care of the villagers who could not afford the basics. Nobody cared to ask her where she came from or who her child's father was. It did not matter to them because Adobe was their own, a good child of Wako. Years passed and her son Chiki matured into a wonderful man. Of course, the maidens in the village were very interested in him. Parents who were just as affluent as Adobe pitched their daughters to her, but she always turned them away. Do you want to do business? Let's do business, but my son, Chiki, is off limits. Adobe would lash back at them every time. Whenever she saw Chiki with females in the village, she would chase them away from him. And when he returned home, she would give him the silent treatment for some time, then warn him to stay away from the women in the village. But within her, Adobe knew that a time would come when her son would want to get married, so she decided to take matters into her own hands. I'm going to look for a wife for my boy, someone I will be happy with, she said to herself. But her plan quickly came to an end when she came across a young woman crying on her way to the market. Out of concern, Adobe asked her why she was crying, and she said, It's my father, he's dying. The herbalist will not continue his treatment if I don't give him more calories. Upon further questioning, Adobe found out her name was Aoma. The young woman lived alone with her father since her mother passed away, so Adobe said, I will do all I can to help you. She kept to her word and paid for Ioma's father's treatment, and in no time, the man recovered. Weeks later, Yoma and her father brought gifts to appreciate Adobe, but on their way out Chiki saw them and Yoma innocently smiled at him. Instantly, he was drawn to her. Chiki went indoors and stylishly asked his mother about the people that just left their compound and she told him all he needed to know. Now the young man began to pursue Aoma. He wanted to make her his wife, but Aoma was very worried. She said to him, Before I ever spoke to your mother, I heard stories about how much she loves and protects you. I will only accept your proposal if she agrees to our union. Chiki was scared because for the first time he had found someone he loved, but their union was dependent on his mother. However, he also could not afford to lose Aoma, so he went to his mother and said, Mama, I want to marry Aoma. I need your support. Chiki trembled as he spoke because he was convinced she was going to say no. But shockingly, she said, she is a perfect choice. When are we going to see her father? Chiki was shocked. He tried to ask his mother why she found Ioma special, but she did not have an answer to give him except, you want to marry her, right? If she's your choice, I will support you. Months passed and the marriage rites were over. After the marriage ceremony, Ioma and Chiki moved into their new home, but at night, there was a loud knock on the door. Chiki was in the bathroom, so Ioma went to open the door. When she opened it, she was shocked to see Adobe standing there with her luggage. Ioma, is there a problem? Why are you here so late? she asked. Your Majesty, do I need your permission to visit my son's house? She answered rudely. Ioma was shocked. Her mother-in-law had never spoken so unkindly to her. She pushed past Ioma and commanded her to bring in her properties, and soon she made herself comfortable in the room. When Chiki was out of the bathroom, Ioma told him what happened and he immediately went to see his mother. When Adobe saw him, she began to cry. Adobe began to narrate how her money finished after she paid for Ioma's father's treatment. Her son knew she was lying. How could a whole Adobe become poor overnight because she spent a few calories? But he was scared of his mother, so he did not say anything. When they left the room, he begged his wife to be patient with her. Maybe she was lonely at home, he said. Do not worry, she will be gone very soon. But it was wrong because Adobe was there to stay. 
In the afternoon of the next day, she realised Ioma had cooked lunch, so she went and poured a large amount of salt inside. Luckily, Chiki and Ioma already had a taste of the food, so they knew the food had been compromised. Ioma tried to ask her why she did that to her meal, but Adobe was unrepentant. I saw all the meat you put in that spot when you were living with your father. Were you eating meat? Adobe answered. Ioma asked why she did not caution her instead of oversalting the food, but Adobe hissed and walked away, annoyed. Ioma went to report to her husband, but he said, Just ignore my mother. Allow her to do what she wants to avoid issues. When he said that, Ioma knew she was in trouble because she had married a man who could not stand up to his mother, and she had a mother-in-law who only allowed her to marry her son because she felt she could control her due to the help she rendered her father. Each day brought a different version of Adobe. Sometimes she would nag Ioma all day, and other times she would barge into their room at night without knocking. Both of you should keep your door open. Do you not know that I am sick? How will you hear when I'm calling you, she would say to them. Despite all that was happening, Chiki remained quiet. He was afraid to caution his mother, although he hated seeing his wife suffer. Months passed and Ioma became pregnant. But five months into the pregnancy, she became very ill and needed treatment from the herbalist. Various herbs were given to her to help her recover quickly, but when the herbalist left, Adobe began complaining. I do not want a sick grandchild. If he needs all these herbs now, perhaps the child will use herbs all its life. When I had my son, Chiki, I never took any help. Yet look at the strong, handsome man I gave birth to, she said in a nagging voice. Chiki tried to quieten his mother, but she was not having it. He will not take any herbs. I will not accept a weakling as a grandchild, she declared. As usual, Chiki respected his mother's wishes and did not give his wife any of the herbs. But as days went by, her health became worse, and one day, she refused to wake up anymore. Fear ran down Chiki's spine. He ran to call the herbalist to check on his wife. As the herbalist tried to revive her, Chiki waited outside, praying for a miracle. Minutes later, his mother returned home. Chiki, why are you outside? She asked her son. But Chiki did not respond to his mother. Rather, he began to cry silently, realizing how foolish he had been. Adobe kept pushing him for answers, and Chiki did what he had never done to his mother. Mama, he began. Ma, don't touch me. My wife might have passed away, and it's because of you and how much of a coward I have been. Chiki's words stunned Adobe. Her son had never spoken to her like that. She slowly walked inside to see what was going on, and she saw the herbalist trying to revive Ioma. When she saw that Ioma was not responding to treatment, she began to cry, realising how much damage she might have caused. So the herbalist asked her to wait outside while he kept trying to treat her. Thankfully, some moments later, he came out and announced that she had woken up. As usual, he left strict instructions for her to take her herbs as prescribed. Immediately after he left, Chiki asked his mother to leave his house. I want to focus on my marriage, please, Mama. You have to leave, he said. But his mother begged, saying, I know I have wronged you. At least let me assist you with Aoma. When she is stronger, I will leave your house. Chiki accepted, because he was convinced his mother now understood her boundaries. Weeks passed and Aoma was completely better. Adobe, on the other hand, began packing her things because her son made the house uncomfortable for her. But Ioma begged her to stay. Mama, I know you are not a wicked person. Stay with us and take care of your grandchild. The child will be here anytime soon. Adobe, overwhelmed with such kindness, began to cry and said, My only friend has found another friend. I must respect it and move on with my life. She began to explain how she had lived her whole life for her son. Every decision and turn in her life had to favour Chiki, even when it did not favour her. Adobe had always wanted to get married, but she did not want anyone to treat her Chiki harshly, so she let the idea go. She had always wanted to travel and help more people, but she always said to herself, Who will look after my Chiki? Where are you going to go now? Are you going home to live all by yourself? Ioma asked her. But Adobe shook her head and said, I am going to my parents' house. I have not seen them. Since they sent me out of the house when they found out I was pregnant, 
I actually planned to visit them after the marriage ceremony. But I became scared and came to yours instead. Ioma soon realized her mother-in-law was determined to leave. She informed her husband, but he was not willing to escort her to the seaport. So, Ioma went alone and waved goodbye to her at the seashore. About a week later, Adobe arrived at her parents' house in Obuna. She stood at a corner, wondering whether to go in or not. Flashes of her last conversations with her parents went through her mind. She remembered how she was taken advantage of by a visitor from another village on her way to the stream and how her parents could not forgive her for something that was not her fault. What's the worst thing that will happen, Adobe told herself. They would only ask me to leave. She confidently walked into her parents' house with her luggage and just by the corner of the house, she met them both resting on the chair. Her heart leapt with joy because they were both alive. Her father recognized her first and broke down in tears, and her mother followed. As old as they were, they knelt, begging for her forgiveness. She tried to get them to stand up, but they refused. Adam, I have looked for you everywhere, her father said to her. Adobe's mother could not stop hugging her. Her answered prayer was standing in front of her. They all sat down and began chatting happily. Adobe told them about her wonderful son, her lovely daughter-in-law and the child they were expecting. She also told them about the greatness she achieved in Oaku. But then she asked, Mama, I know you were praying for another child when I was home. Where are my siblings? But her mother shook her head and said, Perhaps God saw how badly I treated the one he gave me, so he shut my womb. Just as she finished speaking, they heard someone calling Mama Papa. It was a man called Ugona, a wealthy farmer who took care of people. Adobe's father introduced him to his daughter, and they both exchanged pleasantries. Ugona sat quietly, listening to their conversations while they spoke. My son, I have never seen you so quiet. You have barely said a word. Adobe's mother teased him. She told Adobe how Ugona had looked after them and several other people in the village. Weeks turned into a gentle rhythm of days for Adobe as she stayed with her parents tending to their needs with the care of a devoted daughter. Each passing day brought her a sense of warmth and belonging, reminiscent of her childhood days when life was simpler and her parents' love enveloped her like a comforting embrace. She relished in the simple joys of sharing stories, laughter and quiet moments with her ageing parents, feeling like a little girl again basking in the unconditional love of her family Meanwhile, Ugona continued to be a steadfast presence in their lives, faithfully visiting the family home to check in on Adobe's parents and offer his support. His consistent presence brought a sense of stability and companionship to Adobe's parents, easing their worries and filling the home with a sense of community. One day, as Adobe and Ugona sat together in the cosy living room, Surrounded by the comforting familiarity of home, Adobe expressed her gratitude for Ugona's unwavering support. You know, Ugona, she began, you don't have to come every day. I'm here now, and I can look after my parents. Ugona smiled warmly, his eyes reflecting genuine kindness and understanding. I'm accustomed to visiting daily, Adobe, he replied gently, and I don't mind at all. Your mother has spoken highly of the help you offered to the people in Oaku. I believe your compassionate heart would be a valuable asset in the work I'm doing in Obuna. Ugona's words stirred something within Adobe, igniting a spark of purpose and fulfillment. The thought of extending her care and kindness beyond the confines of her parents' home filled her with a sense of purpose and excitement. After a moment of contemplation, Adobe nodded with a smile. I accept your invitation, Ugona, she said earnestly. I am grateful for the opportunity to contribute to something meaningful and to continue spreading love and compassion wherever I go. And so with Ugona's encouragement and support, Adobe embarked on a new chapter of her journey, eager to immerse herself in the work of serving others in Abuna. Each day, Auna would arrive to pick her up from the family home, and together they would venture out into the community their hearts filled with compassion and their hands ready to offer assistance. As Adobe immersed herself in her newfound role, she found solace and fulfillment in the simple act of lending a helping hand and making a positive difference in the lives of others. 
with each smile she brought to a child's face or each comforting word she offered to an elderly neighbor, Adobe discovered a renewed sense of purpose and joy. And amidst the bustling activities of her days, Adobe found moments of quiet reflection where she would pause to appreciate the beauty of the present moment and the blessings that surrounded her. In those moments, she felt a profound sense of gratitude for the journey that had led her here and the people who had supported and uplifted her along the way. As the days turned into weeks and the weeks into months, Adobe's bond with Ugona grew stronger, blossoming into a deep and meaningful connection rooted in mutual respect and admiration. Their shared experiences and shared purpose brought them closer together, forging a bond that transcended mere companionship and blossomed into something beautiful and enduring. And through it all, Adobe remained ever grateful for the love and support of her family, the kindness of Ugona, and the opportunity to make a difference in the lives of others. In embracing her newfound purpose and embracing the journey that lay ahead, Adobe discovered the true meaning of fulfillment and the endless possibilities that awaited her on the path of service and compassion. One day, her mother said to her, I think Ugona likes you. Since his wife passed away, he has not been romantically attached to anyone. Don't be silly, Mama. Adobe blushed. I am not as young as other women. I am almost 50 years and five years older than he is. I'm sure he has better options. Her mother laughed and changed the topic, hoping time would bring them together. One day while they were at home, Ugona visited as usual. As Adobe went about doing her chores, she noticed he was staring at her. Ugona. You keep looking at me. What happened? She asked him. He smiled and said, For the first time since my late wife passed, I want to remarry. Adobe, would you consider marrying me? Wow, why so straightforward? She said back, teasing him. But he responded, I am old-fashioned. I go for what I like when I see it. Adobe queried him about their age difference and how people would talk, but he said, for a woman who went on to have her baby and achieve so much greatness for herself despite what people had to say, you should know how irrelevant negative words are. Adobe finally felt relaxed. For a brief moment she forgot who she was and the hurdles she had overcome in life. Well, she decided to let a relationship between herself and Ugona happen. Time passed and their bond got stronger. She could not believe all she had secretly wished for while she was caring for her son, Chiki, had come to pass. She was able to travel with Ugona to nearby villages and help more people, and she got herself a man who adored every fibre of her being. One day, she returned home tired. From her visits to some villages, she had to do it alone because Ugona had gone on a trip. But when she got home, she was surprised to see Chiki, Aoma, Ugona, and her parents sitting together and their baby in her mother's arms. How did you find me? Adobe asked Chiki, stammering. She had not seen her son in months, and even though she missed him, she knew she had to let him and his family be. Chiki hugged her and she broke down in tears, apologizing to him and Yoma again for what she had put them through. Chiki explained how Ugona traveled to find them, and also stated his intentions to marry Adobe. He stayed with them until after the wedding, and Adobe truly felt blessed, remaining grateful to God for the day she left her son's house to pursue her independence. This story simply explains the seasons of life, and I'll be referring to Isaiah 43 verse 18 to 19. But forget all that, it is nothing compared to what I'm going to do, for I am about to do something new. See, I have already begun. Do you not see it? I will make a pathway through the wilderness. I will create rivers in the dry wasteland. Life is and will always be in stages, and the longer people remain in seasons that have expired, the more of a nuisance they would become. Analyze the life of Adobe and compare it to the scripture of today. In her case, she could not let go of her son, which prevented her from entering her next season in life. All she could think of was all the sacrifices she had made for him, which hindered her from seeing the bigger picture that it was finally time to live her own life. The Bible says, do you not see it? That means a new season can come and a person would completely ignore it. For those who are familiar with the ministry of Jesus Christ, you would understand he had various seasons. When he was done with all he had to do on earth, he had to ascend to heaven. He did not cling to anything. 
he knew that it was time for the next step for God's purpose to be completely achieved. Let me delve deeper into the profound wisdom encapsulated in the transition between life seasons. It's not merely a matter of navigating from one phase to the next. It's about the essence of identity and purpose that remains constant amidst the ever-changing tides of life. In every season, whether it be one of youthfulness and exuberance or one of maturity and reflection, there lies a delicate balance between embracing the present and holding on to the past. It's easy to become ensnared in the memories of what once was, clinging tightly to familiar comforts and routines, even as the winds of change become us forward. Yet, as the scripture in Isaiah 43 reminds us, there is always something new on the horizon, waiting to be discovered and embraced. It's a call to relinquish the shackles of complacency and step boldly into the unknown, trusting that each new season brings with it its own set of opportunities and blessings. But therein lies the cautionary tale. Amidst the excitement of new beginnings, there is a risk of losing sight of who we are at our core. It's all too easy to be swept away by the currents of change, forsaking our true selves in pursuit of fleeting desires or societal expectations. So, let us heed the wisdom of the ages and tread carefully as we navigate life's ever-changing landscape. Let us hold fast to our values, our passions and our sense of self, even as we eagerly embrace the promise of what lies ahead. And if you find yourself resonating with the journey of Adobe and the lessons it imparts, I invite you to explore further by downloading the ebook linked in the description. It's a treasure trove of inspiration and insight waiting to be discovered by those who seek to enrich their lives with the timeless wisdom of storytelling. In closing, I extend my heartfelt gratitude for allowing me to share this journey with you. May it serve as a beacon of hope and inspiration on your own path through life's many seasons. Until we meet again, may you walk in peace and purpose.